Hey there in YouTube land, and well, here we go. Friday coming up is Friday the 13th, and although I think a long time ago I uh, did look at the uh, Friday the 13th franchise, I think I'm going to do it in a different way this time. And uh, I'm going to start tonight by uh, skipping right on past 1, 2, and 3, and looking right at the, uh, the trilogy that most people remember for Friday the 13th. That's right, we're going to look at the... Uh, Tommy Jarvis trilogy, and uh, <clears throat> it's gonna be a lighthearted look into the uh, into the franchise. Friday the Thirteenth, of course, started back well in nineteen eighty, and it was the uh, the movie that helped launch the uh, whole slasher movie genre into like pretty much ad nauseum and mainstream. A lot of people think that uh. Halloween was the uh, film that started the uh, the whole slasher movie uh, craze, but actually it wasn't. Halloween, when it was released, although it was extremely successful, uh, was thought of as an anomaly. And uh, it wouldn't be until actually two other films, Friday the 13th and uh, Prom Night, a movie that rarely gets any recognition at all, were actually the films that did well enough to... Uh, get the ball rolling, at, to the point where when Halloween came around again to do a sequel, they uh, pretty much decided they were going to ape a lot of the Friday the 13th stuff. Um, no longer was the uh, suspense and atmosphere enough, they kind of had to get the nudity quoting in there. So uh, if you watch the uh, Halloween, and you can probably thank Friday the 13th for the nurse scene and uh, some of the other scenes, but... Uh, don't blame them for that horrible, horrible wig that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis wore in that movie. They, they can't be blamed for that. So the term Tommy Jarvis trilogy. Well, if you're a Friday the 13th fan, then you know that that's Friday the 13th, the final chapter, which is obviously a lie because this is the start of the trilogy. Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. And Friday the 13th, Jason Lives. Kind of a spoiler there, but uh, let's go with that. So uh, let's look at part four. Well, part four of Friday the 13th pretty much picks up where uh, part three left off. Uh, at this point, it uh, looks like uh, Jason is, is dead, and uh, there's, a, uh, there's people going up to uh, another area on Camp Crystal Lake because, I don't know, it's a huge area. Uh, there's a, uh, we're introduced to a mother in this one, and... Uh, her uh, extremely hot blonde daughter, and uh, their genius, and the, and the genius son. Well, I don't think we know exactly where the dad is. I think it's uh, we're going to go with divorce here. It might be mentioned, but it's been a while. So, uh, and honestly, it's a Friday the Thirteenth film. I'm not really looking too deeply into the uh, into the aspects of the characters like that. But uh, anyway, this is a really popular film in the series. If not one of the most if not the most popular series, and let's be honest, by the time they did the first three, they pretty much had it down to a science. So when Joseph Zito, the guy who directed The Prowler, which is, for slasher fans, it's considered one of the uh, meccas, uh, they knew exactly what they were going to do with this film, and they did everything right with this one. I have to say, they took everything that was in the other three, they didn't put much new into the film, but they just did a kind of like amped it up and did a better job. They brought back Tom Savini since uh, he was told in this movie that he was going to be able to kill Jason off finally since this was the last Jason Voorhees Friday the 13th movie. Apparently he wore his welcome out after three films because he's not technically, the well he's not in the first one. Except for, well, that infamous scene, which we'll talk about when I talk about the first three. Uh, in this one here, basically, you got Tommy Jarvis, and he's going to be a... He's like this Dick Smith-type guy that makes masks and plays Zaxxon. And I like him already, because, you know, I played a lot of Zaxxon as a kid, so I could really relate to Tommy Jarvis, and he reads Fangoria magazine, and... So, they're going out to get something. It's a MacGuffin. Who cares? They're going to get something that they need to get, and they run into this guy. I'm going to say his name is Rob. I really don't remember. He's kind of this big husky mountain guy who 
it was after his uh, s uh, sister's killer, Jason, and uh, if you follow the timeline back, he's really found out really fast because she, she she hasn't been dead for that long. Anyway, meanwhile, there's a, uh, a group of uh, likable students that, well, college students, I guess, that came up to the uh, cabin next to them. And uh, one of those students is Crispin Glover. Yes, Crispin Glover. And this, if you see no other movie that has Crispin Glover in it, you have to see this one. There is an hilarious dance scene. Crispin Glover did say that uh, the song that he was dancing to was completely different to than the song that uh, they play in the movie for copyright reasons. But uh, I've tried putting the other music to it, and uh, no, Crispin, it's still really, really weird dancing. And I love it. He just... He's in Crispin land, and... Population Crispin. It's fantastic. And he is one of the most likable characters in this. In this actually, he's one of the most likable characters in the whole franchise. His character is extremely well-rounded. He has a bit of a backstory. He said, you know, his girlfriend's uh, pretty much cheated on him and left him. He's been dumped and that. There is uh, interesting dynamics between him and a character named Teddy, who uh, will get killed, and Teddy uses the teddy bear line on girls, which doesn't work in real life or in this movie. Which is kind of a cool change. We get the uh, the twins that I remember seeing back from Days of Our Lives because I'm a soap opera fan. Uh, from well, I'm an older soap opera fan. Back when I was in my teenage years, so I watched those, and that's when they were on it. Uh, and they're gorgeous. Uh, Peter Barton, also another soap opera actor, uh, shows up in this one here as well. And uh, he was also in uh, another series I think called The Powers of Matthew Starr. Or was that another actor? That just had a similar chin. I have to look that up. So as you can tell right now, I'm not going to get through all three of them in trilogy in this one, but I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look up Pete, the Pars of Matthew Starr. I remember that show. It didn't last very long. If you'd seen it, you would know why. And yes, it is P Peter Barton and that short-lived Pars Matthew Star. So that guy that gets in the uh, shower sequence, uh, that's uh, that's him. We get a good corkscrew death from a uh, uh, well corkscrew scene with uh, with Crispin Glover. There is that's there's an Larry sequence where uh, character Rob gets killed in the basement and pretty much screams out, "Oh no, he's killing me." I kid you not, he really does. He pretty much is this big, manly, tough guy with a machete, which, of course, is there for Jason to take away, I guess. Uh, there's a cool scene at the beginning of it where uh, there's a uh, kind of a sleazy uh, morgue attendant worker that's watching 20-minute workout and doing what everybody uh, did when they watch 20-minute workout, get completely turned on. Uh... A nurse gets killed at the beginning, and uh, if this seems a little disjointed. Don't worry, it's much better in the film. But I'm just going through highlights right now because I know I'm not going to get through all three. I'm going to actually have to go to another video to get to the next one. The movie turns into some great kills. There is some great actual camera work in this movie that really surprised me. Uh, the movie does tend to be pretty atmospheric, and there's a Kind of a dark turn with knowing what happened to the mother. And you don't think of Jason as somebody that might kill a mom. Because after all, this is how Jason got started. He's a mama's boy after all. But uh, it is alluded to. And in a cutscene from the movie, it is shown that he actually did kill the mother. But uh, we don't get to see it in the movie. And I kind of think that was taken out because, well, it's Jason. And uh, that's what started him in the first place. Tommy, however, uses his... Uh, makeup skills at the end of it. And, oh yeah, I guess I forgot to tell you who Tommy's played by. Uh, Tommy's actually played by a uh, famous 80s actor, Corey Feldman, who would go on to do like movies like The Goonies and Lost Boys and lots of cool stuff like that. 
And this one, this is a very early one. This is before he did the Goonies, actually. I'm probably going to mention the Goonies more in this next video because uh, part five has kind of a Goonies story. Anyway, uh, he sees that uh, everybody's dying and runs upstairs and shaves his head and uh, kind of makes himself up to look like Jason from uh, the uh, from the picture in the magazine. If uh, Jason just had a shaved head and wasn't actually mongoloid, but hey, it's it's a definitely a good college try, and it tends to work since he knocks the mask off of Jason and slices him so deep that he slides down slowly on the uh, on, on the machete. It's actually a pretty cool scene and he pretty much flips out but then again if everybody around you were was like getting killed off you you might f kinda of flip out too overall this is a really good movie uh, Tommy looks like he's going batshit crazy at the end of the movie and the look that he gives the camera begs for a sequel which is coming and uh, as far as the Friday the 13th movies go for some people this was the pinnacle of them this would be the one where, uh, the last one you would actually see Jason before he would become what he would become in part six, which we'll hopefully talk about in the next video if I don't talk too much about part five. Anyway, this has been Friday the 13th part four and the first part of the, uh, Tommy Jarvis trilogy. We'll get in the second part, uh, hopefully as soon as I get this one, uh, uploaded and it'll give me a chance to, uh, to make my tea. So right now, guys, it's, a uh, Time for tea.